This morning, we conclude our three part morning round series about sleep. Catching more Z's can re energize you and make you feel better. But what's happening to your brain while you see sleep? CBS News contributor Dr. Tara Nerulu, a cardiologist at Lenox Hill Hospital, is here with us in New York, and she joins us with some very interesting answers. Good morning to you. Good morning. So the brain is really this fascinating, mysterious organ that we didn't know a lot about until the 1950s. And that's really when we started to discover that it's not passive, but it has a very active process that goes on at night when we sleep. So what is happening? Because I was fascinated to learn the neurons are firing as much when we're asleep as when we're awake. Is the brain cons consolidating memory? That's right. And so one of the big things the brain does has to do with memory. And so when you get a good night's sleep, it primes your brain and readies it to accept new information that can form memories when you sleep. Then once you go to sleep, it saves or cements that information and consolidates it. One of the most interesting things that it does is sort through all your memories and really discard the things that are unimportant to clear up storage space and keep the things that are more important, like emotional memories. So for instance, if you slipped and fell on the ice, it will remember, gee, I shouldn't step on the ice, I might fall, but you won't remember what the sky looked like or who was standing next to you. So it really helps you keep the important things. Fascinating. What, aside from the memories, what else happens in the brain at night? So and, and at night, you process information so that when you wake up, you can better make decisions, which is why we say maybe you should sleep on it when you have a hard decision to make. It helps you learn procedural tasks or motor tasks. So if you're learning how to play the guitar, swing a golf club, you essentially practice that or form those images and memories in your brain at night. And then interestingly, the brain forms these creative connections. So we've all known creative people who put ideas together that we never would have thought could go together and they make a beautiful something out of it. And that's what the brain does. It takes these concepts from different parts, combines them. And when you wake up in the morning, many people describe these aha moments, many musicians and writers and scientists. How important then is inactivity to the brain? Because even though these neurons are firing, I guess by definition, it's still inactive. Right, and so one of the concepts has to do with using that time at night to be inactive or still, and that's really evolutionarily based, we think. Animals in the, king, in the, in the wild essentially become still or inactive at night because that's a time when they're vulnerable. And so that may be a trait that's been passed on. We know that all animals sleep. Uh, in addition to that, we conserve energy at night. That's also a time at night when you wouldn't be able to hunt in the wild and get food. So that's a good time to slow down all your metabolic processes. Another thing that I thought was really interesting is that apparently the brain Green is actually doing cleansing of toxins at night? Yes, it's like a little janitor. So <laughs> the, brain, the brain cells actually shrink, some of them shrink at night by as much as 50%, which wow. opens up the passageways or the channels in the brain for the fluid to flow that clears out these toxic chemicals that build up during the day. You also release growth hormone at night, uh -huh. um, which stimulates muscle growth and cell repair. So if you're not getting enough sleep, if you are sleep deficient, yes. <laughs> what is actually happening? I mean, are there long-term or short-term things you should be aware of. Yeah, so about 80% of Americans are sleep deficient. You really need about seven to nine hours. And the consequences can range from mild impairment of your ability to think or focus or concentrate up to increased risk of diabetes, heart disease, increased weight gain because your metabolism slows down, decrease in your immune function. And then at the extreme end of the spectrum, we think that maybe it might be related to some neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's because the brain is unable to clear out these toxic chemicals. It's amazing. I love this whole idea that the brain is sort of filing away things and deciding what to file and what to discard. Now you wonder, how does it do that? Yeah. But that's a whole other segment. Dr. Tara <laughs> thanks so much. Thank you.